All right, guys. Well, it is starting to feel like winter time here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. That bugs in a jar farm in the Finger Lakes of New York on this blustery, it is Monday, <coughs> October 18th, 2021. And uh, so just getting up here on an average Monday morning in the fall of 2021 and uh, j just trying to figure out where to throw a dart to do a rant about the collapse of civilization and a planet. Good Lord, you know. I remember those days when I used to really have to dig to find a, uh, an article on the mainstream media. But now the mainstream media is sounding more and more like Collapse Chronicles. Just a brief tour around the planet and I think we're going to end up in Russia. I just want a couple of more headlines that I'm passing over on our way to Russia. Let's start out in <clears throat> Japan, where Japan's prime minister says Fukushima wastewater release cannot be delayed. So, what are we? How a million gallons of radioactive water or something like that? getting ready to be dumped into the Pacific Ocean. Okay, from Japan, where is this? Ethiopia. Did you realize Ethiopia is plunging into chaos? There you go. Right now, Ethiopia stands on the brink of escalating civil war and state failure. Last week, fighting intensified dramatically. Blah, blah, blah. Millions are starving. And time to avert a descent into chaos is running out. Yes. From uh, Ethiopia to the Western Hemisphere's version of Ethiopia, which of course would be Haiti. <clears throat> a bunch of stories about how this gang in Haiti just uh, kidnapped 17 U.S. Christian missionaries. Uh, no comment. I'm not even going to go under the gang of Haitians uh, kidnapping 17 Christian missionaries. But the bigger picture, gangs expand territory as Haitian government struggles to stay in control. Anybody wanting to find out what, uh, <clears throat> what uh, Mad Max is going to look at, look like, just go down to Haiti. Uh, couple of stories. Let's look at our own country and then we're going to head over to uh, Russia. I had this story mentioned to me by another alert listener. Uh, well, now we have robo dogs with sniper rifles. There you go. A new autonomous weapon system combines a quadruped robot with a sniper rifle. Yes, science fiction has seeped into science reality this week as a robotics company showed off its sniper rifle equipped robo dog at the Association of the U.S. Army's annual convention in Washington, D.C. Do with that what you want to. Uh-oh, I just deleted the story uh, from Maine about, I guess it just rolled out, you know, the, uh, the Save the Whales uh, Joe Biden administration, to his credit, was trying to outlaw lobster fishing off the coast of Maine. 
for the next three months while the 400 remaining right whales left on the planet make their annual pilgrimage through there. But don't worry, the lobster fishermen have nothing to worry about because a judge has said lobsters, which I think we're sending over to China. Isn't China claiming that it's Maine lobsters that started the corona panic? But anyway, so we can continue to send China corona panic infested lobsters. Uh, this judge has uh, said, oh well, the whales, if it's, if you know, if the choice is between about a hundred lobster fishermen making a few dollars selling uh, lobsters to China versus the extinction of a species of great whale, guess who wins, guess who loses. But anyway, we're going to settle in with two stories from Russia and I am going to let you draw your own dots <clears throat> uh, between these two stories. Now a similar story to this <clears throat> right here in our own country in Alaska. I forgot all about this one that I guess the only road into and out of Denali National Park in, uh, in Alaska is, you, you know, is sinking into the ground. I guess they're going to shut down the road and it won't be open again all of next year uh, and who knows, but you will see more stories like this. But let's go over to Russia. Reuters News, <clears throat> wow, Russia's remote permafrost thaws threatening homes and infrastructure. Uh, the old airport in the Siberian settlement of Cherapsha has been unusable for years. Its runway transformed into a swampy field of puffed up mounds and reliefs like cities and towns across northern and northeastern Russia, not to mention Alaska and Canada and I assume Greenland and Iceland and uh, wherever else, uh, like cities and towns, they cross wherever there's permafrost. Chiropsha is suffering the climate, is suffering the consequences of climate change thawing the permafrost. This is Alexei Maslikov, a scientist at Moscow State University. Quote, there is not one single settlement in Russia's Arctic where you would not find a destroyed or deformed building. Homes are becoming separated from sinking earth. Pipelines and storage facilities are under threat. Roads are increasingly in need of repair. As Russia I don't know why they just center on Russia as the Arctic warms 2.8 times faster than the global average. The melting of Siberia's long frozen tundra is releasing greenhouse gases that scientists fear could frustrate, could frustrate global efforts to curb climate warming emissions with permafrost covering 65% of Russia's land mass, the costs, you know, the actual out-of-pocket costs are already mounting. Russia could face 7 trillion rubles, that's around a hundred billion dollars in infrastructure damage by 2050 if the rate of warming continues, said Mikhail Zelenyak, director of one of these permafrost institutes I cannot pronounce. Uh, now that is if the present rate of warming is locked in, that we're looking at 100 billion dollars in infrastructure damage 
in Russia, according to one estimate. Now, of course, if the methane bomb blows and the rate of warming goes through the roof, you can take that $100 billion and invest it in a new oil well in the ice-free Arctic. <clears throat> Uh, the bumpy landscape around Churopsha resembles giant sheets of bubble wrap in places where ice wedges inside the ground have melting, causing the ground to crumble, sag, or cave in altogether," said Alexander Fyodrov, deputy director of the Permafrost Institute. Quote, quote, roads, electric power supply lines, gas pipelines, oil pipelines, all linear structures respond primarily to the warming climate and its impact on the permafrost, close quote. Built in the 1960s and 70s as Soviet Russia expanded into the Arctic, many buildings in the far north and far east were constructed with the assumption that the permafrost, now the tempafrost, frozen for millennia, was sturdy and would never fall. Apartment blocks sit as atop stilts driven meters into the ground. Chiropsha, with a population of 10,000, saw its airport close back in the 1990s because of permafrost melt. Over the years, the once smooth runway has become a mottled field that looks more like a dragon's back as the ground sinks. Eventually, the area could become a lake as more and more of these areas, if you've seen these videos of all of these new lakes forming up there. Uh, the Permafrost Institute has been studying the site for years and found that some areas were sinking at an average rate of two to four centimeters a year, while other areas were sinking by up to 12 centimeters annually. Uh, <clears throat> in one study, 72% of people surveyed uh, say they have had problems with their home's foundations. Across Russia, there are more than 15 million people living on permafrost foundations today. Yes. This is Ecology Minister Alexander Kozlov. Quote, we don't know what's actually happening hmm, to it. We need the monitoring not only to follow what is melting and how. Yes. Uh, anyway. Then uh, they go talk to all the residents, bringing in truckloads of soil to fill the gaps between their grounds and their homes. Neighbors are trying to sell their houses. Uh, said one fellow, quote, how can we go against nature? We have to adapt. It's like this everywhere. There is no one to complain to, to the spirit up high, perhaps. I think that's a good a person as anybody to complain to, but uh, I will let you uh, draw dots between that story and this story from the Washington Examiner. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> Russia eyes year-round northern sea route that would speed natural gas shipments. All right, and oil shipments. I don't know why they're limiting this to natural gas. 
Russia expects to soon begin shipping products through the Northern Sea Route all year long, a plan that would speed up its transport of liquefied natural gas to Asia. Hmm. Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Trutnev said the country plans to utilize the route which allows passage through the Arctic north of Russia for year-round transport as soon as next year with the help of naturally thawing ice. And there you go, with the help of naturally thawing ice and ice-breaking vessels. Yes. The announcement sets a clearer timeline for the long-sought goal of expanding Arctic operations, which the Russians have already been testing out this year. And by Arctic operations, we're talking everything from gas drilling, oil drilling, shipping, all of this stuff. Uh, in January, a Russian tanker carrying LNG made a round trip via the northern sea route for the first time during the dead of winter, uh, hitting the Chinese port of Jingsu before returning. Russia transported nearly 18 million metric tons of natural gas through the route in 2019, operating only during part of the year. And year-round access would allow it to move that gas more quickly and easily to Asia without having to no negotiate passage through the, through the Suez, Suez Canal is that, uh, said energy analyst Nico Safos, quote, it just makes Russia able to access markets more cheaply. Yes, they may, they make more money and all of that. But long term, you can, you can say that, hey, if I can access the market year round, maybe it, makes you more a more attractive partner yes uh, do you think so anyway uh, the russians have already indicated they expect their expanded presence in the arctic to better their edge with President Vladimir Putin saying uh, whatever the the northern sea route would be part of China's maritime Silk Road. The Russians have indicated they expect the their expanded presence in the Arctic to better their edge with Putin's saying the Northern Sea Route would be part of China's Maritime Silk Road as a, quote, global and competitive route that connects Northeastern, Eastern, and Southeastern Asia with Europe. Close quote. Uh, St. Petersburg Governor Gregory Poltevenko has boasted direct ownership of the region. Quote, Russia's Arctic attracts many who are interested in its resources, he said. Yes, uh, during an unveiling ceremony for a new icebreaker. Quote, but the Arctic is ours and we have proved it. Russia is already the globe's top net, net exporter of natural gas, according to the International Energy Agency. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I understand this does not have all of the excitement of, uh, I, I, I don't know, what is the number one story on the planet today, but uh, I see the rains have returned 
to the Finger Lakes. Imagine that on this cold winter day and I need to go get some chairs out of the rain that I just set out there before starting this rant. Yes, yeah, so I have to go back out and put the chairs back that I just set out. The old super Airbnb host job is never done. Bye guys.